Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Shin is late. Someone's just put. Wow, that was whoever that is is pretty on the ball, but he, he isn't late. He's actually here. I can't blame him for this three minute long uh, delay, but um, he's had to rush from umpiring his several games in his rather revealing undies. Isn't that right, Shin? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Dude, what's going on here? He's speechless. <laughs> He's offended. Fuck Giving him, where are you? Treatment. What the fuck? <laughs> are you on mute, Shin? He's on the, mute, yeah. Isn't it... it isn't it funny how like someone said Shin is late? I kind of introduce him and just silent on us. <laughs> what the fuck? Right, let's just check. Um... Oh shit, I was on mute. Mute. I'm sorry, man. Look at us. We're oh, all crying. Fuck you. Look at what? us. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. I knew yeah, it. But, no, but you know the thing was, you you literally. I thought spoke, you heard me. And you you were spoke responding. to us like ten seconds before I pressed stream, and then suddenly you muted us. <laughs> <laughs> because I you always yell at us to go to on mute. mute. Well, I know. Like, no, I don't. No, 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 no. I don't. Yes, no, 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 do. no. No, I don't. I don't yell at everybody to go on mute. I ask everybody to be quiet. There's a big difference. Right, <laughs> which means we need to mute because even a tiny little sound. And sometimes things make noises, Andrew. Well, I'm fully aware of that, having these headphones, <clears throat> microphone, and having shin eating, chewing, bouncing basketballs, pen clicking... I, Look at us all getting along right now. This is great. <laughs> this is what this is what Lon does to people. That's the whole point of this. <laughs> a, We're gonna blame him. Of friendships. This is my fault. Anyway, you all started it. So, anyway, it's a pleasure, despite the fact that we've been bickering. Um, it's a pleasure to have everybody back. Um, and um. Even Tiffany Lockhart has joined us this evening, or this afternoon, more to the point. But thanks for joining us anyway. Thank you. Hello. Um, so I wanted to, I've been, kind of have this idea about talking about this for a while. Um, is that we, we kind of did, it was a couple of years ago, we did um, a conversation about the, the kind of rights and wrongs of the catfish, and it's been done you know, I think it was quite a long stream, and this is kind of a similar aspect to that, but I was, something that I don't think many people have discussed, it's kind of very introspective, which is obviously what I, you know, kind of like to talk about, really, a lot of the time, is what is it about the catfishing that we find so entertaining? It kind of seems like such an obvious question, or should I say an obvious answer, that no one that maybe not that many people have actually stopped to wonder why. It's like, well, actually, why? Now, there are many, many answers that I'm, I'm sure we'll all go over, and everybody will have a slightly different take on why, um, you know, they find it interesting to them. Um, but there's also, you know, what does it say about us, about listening to somebody being fucked with? Um, so I, I kind of find it, very interesting because I have to almost like I, I can I can dip in and out of the catfishing and listen to the different catfishes and, and not question it and just enjoy it for what it is, which is mostly just complete silliness. Um, but other times I'm going, why am I listening to this? Um, it does get me every so often. I'm like, what what is it? You know, and the the you know the people that are closest to me, as I'm sure. Everybody has this problem as well. They think I'm insane. It's like, why are you listening to this? What the hell is this person screaming and you're listening to it in the shower? <laughs> it's just fucking insane. Um, so we have a perfect um, panel of people um, to go over this. And I would call Amanda James a connoisseur when it comes to Lawn's catfishing. Um, content and I don't know whether that's offensive or not Amanda James I didn't mean it to be but you you, I, I think out of all of us I don't think it's unfair to say you may listen to it more than the rest of us um, I mean I don't know possibly it it is shameful certainly I could have learned 
another language. I, you know, I could have done something much more productive with all the time I've spent. I just put it on for background noise. You know how Lauren has Little House on the Prairie on constantly in the background? I have Lauren on in the background. I don't know what that says about me. Um, I'd rather not the same thing. think too hard yes. about that. <laughs> You're not weird. Um, You're not weird. I mean, no, it's weird. I think it's weird. relatively it's okay, though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm so drawn to it. It's it's funny. It's not just Lorne being an idiot. I also enjoy like the performance aspect of it, especially from Ember. She she was very creative and coming up with all these characters mm. and Definitely. a lot of calls. She's just talking to herself. And Lauren is on the other line. She's talking to herself, switching characters very seamlessly. She'd go from Winnie to Matilda to Victor. Who's Matilda? And, and then to Emma. Matilda was Winnie's nurse um, in the hospital. And she was very, like, a stereotypical. Um, <laughs> she, Ember created this very stereotypical character of like a I don't know god fearing black woman like motherly black woman and Lauren completely fell for it she did a good job with Lauren the voice. fell for it are you sure about that well of course oh, yeah. it, they you cried can... together <laughs> yeah. they did Matilda they did. you're fucking making me cry yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's okay baby <laughs> You haven't yeah, heard that, Andrew? Random nurse. I don't think I have. Don't, you, don't forget most of that stuff I've not listened to. If you picture the scene in your head, you have Winnie in the hospital. She's got God only knows what's wrong with her. It changed daily. Um, and then you have this random nurse coming in. Winnie's on the phone with her boyfriend on the other side of the country that she's never met, fighting about whatever. And this random nurse comes in, runs the phone, is trying to mediate this this fight. Like that would ever happen in real life. And Lauren is just spilling his gut, this strange woman. It's ridiculous. The whole, all these setups are just so silly and stupid. Um, but very entertaining because the way Ember would, would lay them out, it's almost like a TV show. You know, you could see it playing in your head. I, so that's I, one I, of the reasons I think I like it. You know, all of the they they create these uh, really serious situations sometimes where, you know, the professionals are are huddling together to figure out a problem. You know, you got the doctor, you got the psychiatrist, you got a nurse, you got your resident pedophile helping you out. It's kind of weird that Lauren's even involved in these conversations. <laughs> that, they, that they even care what he's That's saying, right. He's, yeah, it's like why why is the thinking. whole life playing out on speakerphone? <laughs> well, you know, I think we should put her on. Uh, a thousand cc's of uh, saline stat what do you think pedophile you know it's like what, what's he have to offer in that situation um but also they, they when they have that like the tsa thing too you know he's offering his expertise it, it, it's just funny it's probably the most inclusive he's ever been yeah it's a good uh, point. as opposed to real life it's a know? really good point that that is this is lawn's highlight it's like you know, like, do you ever have the moments in life where there's so much going on in your life? You've got, you know, work issues, money issues, relationship problems. And every now and again, it dawns on me and goes, you know what? I don't know why I'm whinging. This is life. It's like it would be dull without this. You know, obviously, we all get stressed and we all have those moments where things seem overwhelming. But every now and again, it dawns on me and I just go, actually, this is pretty cool. It's good that I've got all this going on. And I think... Lawn had those moments, but it's so it's, it's so insane. You're listening to it and you're thinking about that, but you almost have to check, double check yourself, and go, "This is all bullshit." Of course, you know it when you're listening to it, but you have to then recreate the context of it all, which just it doubles the entertainment value. Yeah, and, and we're also, we're always trying to learn something about Lauren. We're trying to figure out something. And, and th sometimes these little scenarios, 
you know, bring out something about his character. But it's never surprising, though. I mean, one of the things that I think has been firmly established since 2007 when he was caught in the sting is he hasn't changed one bit. Not one. He hasn't learned anything. No. At all. Well, I don't think he hasn't learned anything. It's just that there's been no growth. I think he has learned that people are going to fuck with him. He has learned that people are dishonest. He, he, you know, he, he... He's a bit more wary now. Um, but that doesn't even stop him. No, I it mean, doesn't. He, it certainly he'll doesn't. Express it. He'll, he'll express his reservations about something, but he'll still go head on into it. You know, he's, there's, no, you know there's no half measures for Lorne. He's, he's all in on everything. And, and you know, just, just the, the idea, just forget about There's 87 whether... people in the chat. It's always special when that happens. Forget about the, uh, you know, how Blue Boy was good and getting this information out of him. Look at the the overall picture of what he's accepting as a scenario. The fact that this person who helped put him in prison for for playing a decoy at a house, at, at a sting house, is now in love with him. I mean, just that alone, you know, he'll believe anything. I think so. Yeah, a lot of the reservations come from probation and the people assigned to work with him. They're saying, Lauren, look at this. How can you believe right. any of this? Think about it. He would be happy to go along with the fantasy, I think, um, and just accept it. And also, I don't think he's smart enough to put it together on his own, really. And even if he was, he's willing to overlook it. But he has to convince probation that he's not being stupid again and that's where a lot of the questioning comes in and the you need to prove it you need to prove you're real it's just to show probation and his counselors because every week after he had um, a meeting with his therapist i think or one of them he would get on the phone and start accusing casey and saying, you know, you need to send me this. You need to send me a video of you saying my name. You need to, you know, what if you're catfishing me? What if you're fucking with me? And he was just repeating things that his therapist had said to him. And by the next day, it would be all forgotten. And it would be back to, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I trust you. Obviously, I'm smart enough to trust you. He said that to Casey. After she was confronting him about being stupid and believing Winnie, after she admitted that she lied to him about being Casey, and you know, after um, wanting to continue a relationship with Ramona, after she told him that she was catfishing him, he said, "Well, at least I'm smart enough to trust you." How the fuck does that make any sense? <laughs> that is not um, smart. It's in some amazing mental gymnastics, and someone's just said that Dubsy CC the thing, like Lawn should hate Casey. You know, like you, you right. even if you right. was totally enlightened, well, not totally enlightened, but even if you was an enlightened person, you'd find it hard to take to forgive someone who sent you down for five years, like unless you totally, you know, was on board with what they did. But you're not going to be, are you? You know, you're going to be like, and then he yeah. completely <sighs> does a a, a one eighty on that. But but you got to be you got to be uh, Lorne you know when you when you when you make that analysis. I mean, Lorne was smitten with Casey when he saw her there's no question about it he was smitten with her and his I I think his memory of Casey in a sense subconsciously is his memory he, he I think he molds it together he puts it together with his memory of Kayla you know uh, that person who he's looking at you know he somehow relates you know Kayla's personality with that person too I mean at least that he was fantasizing about that I think which I find interesting. Well, you know, what's interesting about the Casey thing, and you're right, he shouldn't want anything to do with Casey, but he convinced himself with no evidence, no proof. He just convinced himself that Casey probably regretted doing this thing because now people from the Church of Cod fuck with her all the time and all that stuff was illegal anyway. So I bet she she regrets doing that and wishes she never took part in it, just like the sheriff. He convinced himself that she was kind of just another victim in the whole thing. She she was just a volunteer. She didn't she was just doing a job and she didn't know it was going to turn into what it did. 
which in Lauren's mind was entrapment and luring innocent men. And I think that goes in tandem with how it's all about how Lorne feels about himself. You know, he's the victim. Uh, he doesn't belong with the other predators. He was, you know, it all stems from that, doesn't it? It's like he's created this victim mentality and he thinks that she's going to buy into that. You know, it's all about how he views it all. So it's like he's creating this reality. Well, it's not a reality, is it? But um, I suppose that is a, it's a fascinating it's a fascinating aspect of it. Tiffany, you've not said much because we've not um, really um, got to you. But, like, you, despite your history with it all, you still listen to some of the newer catfishing stuff, don't you? So what? what is it that... What is it that you... Because, <laughs> you know, like, you go through phases where you don't give a shit. So why is it that you still find it entertaining some of the time? Well, first of all, I wanted to say about the the Casey thing. I think as far as him believing her a little bit more, even though the, the entire scenarios get to be ridiculous, he's not just speaking with her, then all of a sudden there's a throuple going on and everything. I think that he felt that he had more control over getting in touch with Casey because he sent an email to who he believed was was Casey. Well, it, it was. She, of course, never responded. But if he had never disclosed that to anybody, he never would have been in touch with Casey. We know that. Um, but none of this would have happened. But I think in Lauren's mind, he's feeling like she responded to his request to make contact, not, not some other you know, Ember way or Jamie way or, or anything, how everyone else has always been together. She was supposed to be disconnected. And by him sending that email independently, I think that made it to be more real, I suppose, for him, at least for that part. And then also, I think as far as him saying shit, like being in love with Casey all of these years and, and all of that, he doesn't... I don't think he actually feels that way. I think that he's saying that because it's love bombing, something yeah. that he believes. Yeah, it's love bombing. He's saying what he believes she would want to hear. Oh my gosh, you know, I, I ran into this person in 2007 and now he's he's thought about me all this time. Wow. And and mm -hmm. so he's and and because she's a female and she's I mean, supposedly available to him. That's the reason why he's saying all of this stuff. And you he know, took the initiative, like you said. He took the sure, initiative. Sure, ab absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as far as him being interesting, I mean, <laughs> the calls are so crazy. Um, and I've, I've shared this with you, Andrew. I don't know if I've, I've said it anywhere. Um, but when it comes to prank calling and all of that, I, I don't listen to anything. You know, like the Borat movies and stuff. I just cringe so hard when that stuff happens it's always been that way i don't like any of those types of shows where somebody's being fooled and there's cameras on them and they don't know it and see how they react i don't like it um but there's something different about lauren <laughs> obviously <laughs> and i think it, it has to do with um like i think amanda james you had said earlier is that the the cast of characters that goes into this too is what's so funny you know there's so many funny things that are said and Lauren's reactions are funny the things that he says are funny um Wes just streamed uh the ritual call uh the other day and I hadn't heard that um since it happened and I <laughs> it's I I didn't remember how funny it was because you have this circus happening um, in, in Winnie's um, hospital room and Lauren's working and he's just like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And he's just, he's staying there and he's, and he's hanging in there. Um, and he's just, uh, I, I don't know where, where most people would never, would never entertain something like that. Um, so I think, I think it's really interesting that the stuff that he will hang in there for I mean it's mm -hmm. such a waste of time but at the same time you know I used to think 
that Lorne was just too stupid. Like you can tell him something ridiculous and he's, and he's an idiot and that's why he'll believe it. But I think it's more than that. I, I don't think it's just purely from an intelligence point of view and, um, you know, being gullible and actually believing things. I think it's more out of loneliness and wanting to have something going on in his life, even though it's really ridiculous. Um, the fact that he has people calling him and people texting with him, um, he he knows when there's crazy shit going on that they're doing it to get a reaction out of him. He's mentioned that before. Like, oh, you're just getting a reaction out of me. Are you recording me? That's when all that kind of stuff comes out. But at the same time, he knows it's boring when that kind of stuff isn't happening. He knows that whoever's on the phone with him doesn't want to sit around and listen to him talk about his day. And even though he wants that, he would love to have a relationship where somebody gets a headset and they sit on there while they're doing their own thing. He's doing their own thing. It's like when he did the yard sale, he did the Christmas stuff with his girlfriend on the phone and they're not talking. Um, but he knows that, that, quote unquote, she's there. And that's something that's important to him. But I, I think, I think it's just interesting to, um, to think about how knowing that, that he knows that there's something wrong here. He's been going through this for years at this point. It's not just a matter of being gullible. I think when he was talking to Ramona, I can chalk that up and say, okay, you were just you're a little bit too gullible there. Um, but the fact that after he comes back, and I think even going back to the Amanda James um, scenario, after it was exposed that this wasn't who he thought he was talking to, she's a different person, and he didn't have the type of relationship that perhaps he thought he did after his sister took 30 seconds on the phone. Um, he said that it took them six months to stop talking. Now I would change that wording a little bit and say it took her six months to either block him and ghost him, or it took him six months to stop talking to her. I don't think it was a, a mutual thing there. Uh, Lauren desperately wants attention. He desperately wants relationship. Um, and he desperately wants, desperately wants to be in this daydream fantasy world um, where he has this, he has like a social life because when it shuts down, he has absolutely nothing. So the calls are interesting because it's not just having regular conversation talking about your day. Oh, Jamie, what did you do today? What ends up happening in those calls? If you think about Jamie specifically, he gets on the phone and he says, hi, honey. Two seconds later, she says, how many jobs did you look for today? And continues to bust his balls for the next hour or however long it's going to go to. And it's the same shit all the time. All of a sudden, Rod comes in the picture. All of a sudden, now there's Casey. And then there's Will who won't, you know, who won't leave them alone. It's, it's a constant, it's constant conflict. And I feel like he really, he really needs that. And he has made mention of that before, like how boring it is when they're not fighting. So that was a really long answer. No, no, it kind of makes, <laughs> Very insightful. makes me, you make, you actually made me think about a few things. Makes me wonder, number one, <clears throat> what his life was like before cell phones and computers, you know, uh, where would he get that kind of stimulation? I know he was younger then, you know, mm -hmm. still a young adult, but, you know, at, when you compare that life to what he's got now, you know, he's got a window to the world with that, with his phone. Uh, and before that, when he could use the computer is even better. I mean, well, suddenly his social life was filled. How you know? old would he have been pre Amanda James? Do we think? Roughly. Oh, I think 30, somewhere around there. No, I don't think it'd have been. Yeah, actually, yeah. You, so he was 37 <laughs> today at the time yeah. of the sting. You got to so... forget he's older than we think. He, I mean, he acts like he's 12, but he's he's he's. You no, know. I've, I just got the when we did the document the other week. 
um, about the about his work history. I, d- I just didn't put things together in my head, but um, um, yeah. So he would have been about thirty. So you're right. What would his life have been like before then? I think it's just. Uh, th- I don't. It's it's difficult. Well, with well, what I, my point is, my point is, it was probably very dull. Uh, oh, and he probably didn't have many places to go. He probably spent a lot of time just sitting around the house or, or, or whatever. But I, all I'm saying is compare that to now that he's got all of these devices and stuff uh, that he can he can reach out to the world in. That's why I think he's really happy. I, I, you know, I think Tiffany's right. I mean, this is so much better than what his life, the way his life used to be, if you can believe that. You know, that's, that's really tough. No, but I, it's funny that this has got brought up. I was listening to a podcast only this morning um, by Chris Williamson. He was on Rogan a while ago. I don't know whether he's a British guy. I don't know if anybody's heard him. There was a guy, a scientist on about, um, I don't know if he's a scientist, but he was a specialist in the area, about addictions of smartphones, video games. So these things are kind of, they are designed to hack you, to... So, for instance, we're designed to get, you know, social interactions uh, give us kind of pleasure because it's important to our survival. If you're social, you're in a you're in a, you're in a more tightly knit community. You've got more chance of survival because you can build better resources. Things like smartphone and Facebook and chasing likes, it it's like a cheat. You think you're getting popular popularity, and that's gonna improve you as a person but it actually doesn't and if you are not aware of what you're doing it's going to create dysfunction and of course what you're saying Shin, is right it's better than the alternative people like lawn don't want to do or are maybe not capable of doing the real groundwork so that you don't have to rely on fake likes but lawn doesn't lawn takes that to the extreme next level is not just chasing likes on Facebook. We all post pictures every now and again, and it's nice when you get some form of positive reinforcement, as long as that isn't a regular thing for you and you need it to feel good about yourself. Um, but with him, he needs fake relationships that deep down he knows is bullshit. And what right. you were saying, Tiffany, before about um, about the fact that, you know, like the Amanda James thing, you'd think that had kind of spooked him sufficiently. Of course, that's true. But do you not think that the catfish of Kayla who landed him in prison for five years, do you not think after walking out of that prison, you'd go, right, okay, no more online relationships, no more fake girlfriends, none of that. But, he but even there was said nothing. That to Chris, he said, he said he needed help getting off the internet. He admitted he, that, that well, he, he admitted, I don't know what, admitting make, makes it sound like he, he pinpointed the problem, with that, but that's not the case. But he actually said to Chris, you know, I'm getting off the internet. He actually said that, or, or I need help yeah. getting off the internet. So he recognized that. I think You're he, he right. was just blaming the internet. I don't think he was, it, he was saying, I need help getting off the internet because you know, I have a problem with it. I think it was more like, I just need to stay away from the fucking internet. The internet. <laughs> well, 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 what about I gotta do something, you know, that, that crying thing, you know, that you think that's just more uh, sympathy uh, ploy? Yeah, yes. I do. I don't think okay. he thought he did anything wrong. It was, I think he was immediately thinking I was Lord. They tricked me. They, they made me do this. I never even wanted to do it. I never even meant to do it. And then he started racking his brain. She's the one who brought up sex. He even said, they they had to put that girl right in front of me. So it was their fault for putting a, a temptation in front of him. And as far as the whole, you would think, yes, when he got out of prison after being catfished by Kayla, you, you would think he would think to himself, okay, I just fucked my whole life up because I fell for a catfish, essentially. But at that point, he he just got out of prison. He's a sex offender now. He's a yeah. felon who tried yeah. to fuck. Now a he's got to go back to that if he has any well, chance right. of a social life. Yeah, exactly. How else yeah. is he supposed to meet women? And Ramona comes out of the blue. Ramona and Ember, they already know all about him. They know all about to catch a predator, and they like him anyway. They want to talk to him anyway. So he's not going to pass. You know, that's his only avenue. Like you said, Shin, 
that's his only avenue to, to towards a woman. And Ramona kind of conditioned him to think, and he even told her this. Remember, he said, you gave me the confidence to know that women still want me even after my crime. So he believed <laughs> yeah. that even yeah. after... Even after she said, I've been fucking with you because you're a kitty fucker. I named myself Ramona Quimby after a little kid character because you like little kids, blah, blah, blah. I think he still believed, well, you know, yeah, there must be something special about me because women still like me even after I committed this crime. They must believe in me. <laughs> so she she sort of conditioned him to believe all the future catfish when you would think it would be the other way around. That, you know, oh, Ramona gave the game up. Now he's not going to believe it anymore. He he believed it even more because of Ramona. There's people like Lauren that, are, and you'll know this, Shin, that, and you actually mentioned this one, Shin, and said he's criminally insane. And of, of course, yeah. there's people can, much, much worse than, than Lauren. I'm not trying to say don't feel sorry for, you know, feel sorry for him because he's not that bad. I'm not trying to say that. No, his his crimes are stupid and his crimes are stupid. They're not based yeah. on greed, but you know. What, or... what I'm trying to say is, there's, there's, there's yeah. he, there's, he has also, like people who are criminally insane, and he is to a, a different degree. He's incapable of learning lessons sufficiently, which is indicative of somebody who's got kind of a low functioning level, who just doesn't have the shit together, and that's a crude way, but a f effective way of saying it. So of course. You, anybody listening to this and us here now, if you're going to put yourself in that scenario, it's like I said earlier, you get out of prison after that, the biggest wake up call one could possibly have. It doesn't get bigger than that. Like you're on, you know, you're all over the internet, you're on TV, you're an RSO. You set yourself goals, targets, you're going to discipline yourself. But people like Lorne, it doesn't exist in their world. It's all. How am I going to sue NBC now? You know who's going to who's going to pay for what's happened to me? That was the focus well, of his did, attention. There's an exception, Andrew. Uh, he did learn something, and that is he learned that if he drinks again, he'll be back in prison. And somehow he's able to squeak past that. Uh, he was he's able to maintain his sobriety. And I got to say, I'm surprised at, at that. Well, so, <clears throat> he th there, he def definitely one sees thing that contributes to that. Tony's well, dead. because he doesn't want to go back to prison. Credit, Shin. No, no, no. no. I, and what I I'm think it's also is, because Tony's dead. No, we're talking about learning a lesson think, about things. Like, 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 he, why is he still talking to Catfish when he's been manipulated and 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 used before? Uh, you know, you could say why does he? You know, uh, he hasn't learned anything from that. Well, I was surprised that he was able to stop drinking because he learned that he would go to prison. And if the if the price is too high, and I have a feeling the last time he went to prison was much worse than the first time he went to prison. Um, if the price is too high, he will fall into line. Uh, so that's why he's not drinking right now. And that surprised me. That really did. Because, again, like like you said, I didn't think he learned anything. Just like talking to, you know, um, uh, nondescript people on the Internet. You know, why would he keep doing that? Well, he is able to learn. He's able to learn at least with regard to the drinking part. Well, I think... I think part of, I think if Tony was still alive, he would still be drinking. So I don't oh, think I would love to know that. Though. I would love to oh, prison. Uh, yeah. He yeah. doesn't have anyone to drink with except for Roy, and he doesn't want to get drunk with Roy. I think that's a big factor oh, that, yeah. into why he doesn't drink anymore. That's below I, I'm him. sure that's you're right. Him. <laughs> that's funny. Exactly. Yep. Well, I there's agree. Alton, you know, but. Uh... Oh, that's true. If Alton hasn't told him by this point to fuck off and and leave him alone, which is quite possible. Yeah. It you know going back to the 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 way his life is today, as compared to before the devices and and the computers and everything else, when he was really thirsty for any kind of attention at all. My guess, my guess, completely. But the what what I constantly always think about. Um, the way his life is today when he wakes up in the morning you know how you you kind of think about your day and you kind of think about what positive things you got going for you what does he think about what does he think about that lays ahead of him and everything that he thinks about is delusion complete delusion and there is times and there was a call where he was talking about actually texting the catfish 
you know, in, in half asleep and not sending things. And he would do that constantly. So it's 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 so ingrained in him right now, this this catfish world, this delusional world. And 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 people, you know, we wouldn't I, I we could recognize something like that. You know, oh, this is you know, I can't be so obsessed with this thing. I can't be thinking about this night. It's like a drug to him. You know, um, it just makes me wonder what kind of what kind of life he has. I, I'm, I'm still interested in that question. I want to know what he does all day long. Everybody wants a camera on him 24 hours a day. Everybody. I, I there isn't a personal listener to this stream. I worked my ass off for 16 know. hours. I want at home. I'd love to see him doing that, what he's doing. Because obviously the, it doesn't show what, I even what's want happening. A, right. I even want a camera in his toilet. We heard he had one, though. So what? Said. Yeah. Fucking right. Why would you want a camera in his toilet? Because he's got to be up to <laughs> something interesting, No, hasn't no, he? in the toilet. Andrew, no. Not, not in the bathroom. You, the Brits call it the bathroom. No, in the, the in the bathroom, not in the toilet. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. see his literal asshole again. Well, we've he's actually he actually has a, a photograph a, a video of his his uh, I don't know his colon at work. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing left to the imagination with this guy. Nothing. <laughs> I love when uh, I love when uh, Blue Boy t uh, called him on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, as well with the for me with the catfishing calls. Like whenever there's a new one that comes out, I listen to it. And and this isn't some of the obviously everybody likes the rage calls everybody likes the rod call and the jeffrey call the jeffrey call is great because it's non-stop rage and he comes out with so many classic lawn <laughs> comments that it's un it's an unbelievable 45 minute little play um but even the boring stuff compared to that because obviously you are going to get some stuff which is just mundane i still listen to it all i think that with the ramona thing it was like, how does Lon function in a relationship? Or what he perceived to be a relationship. That was what was fascinating to me um, at that point. Um, of course. It's like with Blue Boy. Blue Boy had actually, I don't know if you remember that call. He was talking about what would we do if we went on a date. And and it kind of it kind of really stretched Lorne's uh, experiences and imagination. He couldn't really think of much. But that was fascinating to me. It how was. limited his world is. How limited. You know, it, it um, really, yes, absolutely. And it looked exactly like the taken abroad date. Right. And, you know, why, why? <laughs> these right. are these sound like horrible dates. Not, not only are they really long, I mean, this is entire days. Cliche. Right. Yeah, very cliche. Every, you know, always mm -hmm. going to the movies, always going roller skating. I mean, why are you going roller skating, Lauren? When was the last time you roller skated? Do you even know <laughs> where to go? You know, I mean, that, oh. that he's so stuck back in the 80s. You know, yeah. and I don't even know if people really did that then. I know, you know, roller skating, but as far as going on a date and going roller skating, oh, you're going to giggle. Oh, I'm going to trip and fall and you're going to giggle. So uh -huh, uh -huh. What? Look at us having fun, you know, it, or or going this to dinner, like and and then going to the mall. I mean, most malls are dead these days, but he wants to walk around the mall for his date. I mean that that's weird. What do you? It makes me wonder. What do you do on the second date? I, mean, I know what Lon's <laughs> trying to aim to, but I suppose that's most guys. But with with you know, like we were talking about. You know, the Ramona thing, how he functions in a relationship. And then it goes crazier. So you've got that context. And then this is like you've got a relationship with a crazy person and all these characters. Then you've got a relationship it's with a robot and then Casey Moreau. So each scenario, you just like listening to it. And even though it might be dull compared to some of the other stuff you're still fascinated that he's buying into it and you, you just can't help but listen but i still i still can't really grasp because i think some of it is lawn's character put yourself right imagine this situation with another predator let's just say an average run-of-the-mill character like 
the doctor, for instance, I did a, you know the dead doctor. I did a video on him in the week because his video was more morbidly released. But or McFetridge, whatever. The point, like, would you be interested? Would anyone be interested if that same? I know it's kind of a bit of a stupid scenario that because no one would be that dumb, and that's the whole point. But j- just imagine if it was someone who wasn't as funny and as interesting as Lorne. Would anybody give a shit? No. No. I don't think so. But it's a bit of a silly question because it doesn't make sense in a way. I've asked a silly question. Because Lawn there's only Lawn that would be in that scenario, isn't there? There's only him that that we'd care to do it to that who, and who would fall for it. So it's kind well, of there was Stanley. Stanley hung in there. He still would have been on the hook if if he, he was, was still, still alive. Just still gross. Yeah. Just went, exactly. Yeah. Real- he went from zero to a hundred without stopping at fifty. It's like the first time I watched a Stanley video, I just happened to catch him rubbing feces all over a mirror. Yeah, I, said, I was I, I don't no, really definitely. Not but I mean, it was just—it's just the point that yes, there there are other people that will fall for it, just like Lauren. But, yeah, but nobody's it's not the same though. level of interest yeah. exactly. So you know yeah. that's different. I know there are people who who love listening to Stanley. Um, and that's fine, you know, to each their own. Um, for myself, though, you know, I don't, I don't have any interest in, in his story. But the Lauren story is, is is really interesting. I think it's interesting too because he is such a victim to life. You know, Lauren has has no power at all in any of the things that happen to him everything happens to him the only reason why he keeps getting catfished is because people call him or write him letters so he doesn't have the the ability to stop himself um, from either picking up the phone because you're you're not going to be able to control that you know lauren i don't think understands the the point of of taking a look at what you can control and what you can't. So he'll never, ever be able to control people going to his house, calling him, writing letters, calling his work. Um, That's just the way that it's going to be for the rest of his life. However, the things that he can control include not answering the phone, throwing letters away as soon as they come in. You know, whatever he has to do to go on with his life. Do you think that's because but, of his desperation, Tiffany? Of course. Of course it is. Yeah. It's a it's a of course it's it's for that. And he he has to sink into this fantasy world where he does have a girlfriend. He does have friends. He does have a social life. Yeah. Because outside of that he doesn't have it. He's a, a man living in a trailer that's falling down, having televisions on in multiple rooms so that it's not quiet. That's it. And he will go along with story after story after story, even when they're so ridiculous, like the ritual, like the TSA call, like constantly having men thrown in his face. Every time more desirable men, men who won't leave. You know, Will was right there every single moment, even though he lived in the same home. But every single moment, Will was there immediately as soon as Jamie knocked or started to cry or something like that. You know, he constantly is getting, and he knows that these things are being thrown in his face for the reason of getting a reaction out of him. Yeah, and it's not its not so much like who the guy is. Or what he just doesn't want to hear another male voice. That he says that a lot. You know, you no, know, I, I don't mean, want to I hear don't... a guy's voice. No, but he had a good relationship with Will, didn't he? At one well, point, it was. Well, he no, does no, when it's no. when it serves him. It's out of convenience, does. That's it. and Dan and, as well. Sure. No, but the, it's the same thing as with Will. It's because I think Lauren also wants to give the appearance of being. A guy who doesn't mind his girlfriend having friends, but notice what happens when they get too close, 
when they start asking too many questions, when there's a fight going on and he says, you better not tell Will what we're talking about. Yeah. Because he knows, yeah. he knows that Will's going to get on his ass and he's going to get yelled at and he's going to turn Jamie against him and it's going to be a whole thing. But he's okay as long as there are distinct boundaries. And and I agree that, you know, typically with relationships, there, there are certain boundaries. You know, you, you don't need to have everybody know every single piece of business between two people. But I think that it's natural um, for somebody to discuss their relationship um, with their friends, certainly when there's a problem. But wasn't Will um, her ex, though? Will was her well, ex, and that, that's another didn't, thing, too. Didn't she have Will a has slept dildo? With all of Lauren's girls, though. Will has slept with all of them at one time or another, right? Winnie? Yeah, he did. He yeah. did, except uh, for Ramona. Yeah. I don't know. Did he except ever get the Ramona, Debbie? I don't yeah. know. He did, but I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember how that that played out. Of course he did. But yeah, he did. Of course he did. Yeah, Will's been everywhere. But uh, been didn't everywhere. he sleep with Casey too? He did. Wow, what a player! <laughs> yeah, of course he did. I know. I know exactly. Exactly. But um, Lord's just Lord's feelings about Will are justified. Then Will's a snake. No, for sure. I mean, but that's the thing. So, but Lorne, <laughs> Lorne should walk away then. That's what, that's what yeah. would have needed to happen. If you're in a situation where you have somebody's ex who they're friends with, and that feels weird to you, and you don't really trust it, it's not good, get out of there. That es is what your responsibility yeah. is. No. Especially but in that scenario where you them. haven't even met them. <laughs> Where you've not even seen no. them, you you're not getting anything. There's no future, is there? There's no like for any guy that's in a in a situation where you know everybody's had like I think long distance relationships are common these days. Internet, you know, you meet someone online. It, it, it's just the way it is. But you always have got to think realistically, right? Is there something come some kind of future in this with Lawn or not? Not future, but you get what I mean. Some the, if it is it worth pursuing. Even like you say, Tiffany, in that scenario, you listen to it and you're just thinking, when you listen to it, I always go, right, Lon, now is the logical time to put the phone down and do not pick it up again. It fucking winds me up every single time I listen. I must have listened to the Jeffrey call 40 times and each time he answers the phone again, it annoys me. Like, why do you, <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, Jamie. I think that's the rod call, but goodbye, Jamie. What do you mean Goodbye. You've just fucking Fuck up. You've you, just picked Jeffrey. it up. <laughs> yeah, what's all that about? <laughs> Fuck you, Jeffrey. Who are you talking to? <laughs> well, he also Jeffrey. believed too. I think, unless it was, that was a different time, but I think he thought that Jeffrey was listening. Yeah, to impress ah. him. At James yeah. Yeah, Jeffrey on mic. Right. Impress him because grown adults do that. Yeah, in Lawrence world, say, hey, women you want to hear me impress men. Yeah, want to hear me make my boyfriend because men mad are so hard be to be really impressed to sleep with. Mm -hmm. That goes. It, it all goes back to Ramona. The whole, you know, putting up boundaries and saying I'm not comfortable with this. I'm leaving the relationship. He was so unhappy with Ramona being friends with the doctor, being what? friends with the um, <laughs> therapist, or whatever. And instead of saying, "All right, you don't want to get the doctor out of our fucking lives," and you know, I'm done. I'm done with this relationship and actually meaning it. He screamed and cried to get her to do what he wanted. And he carried that all the way till Casey with Alex Jones. You're too fucking close to Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones is a god. If you're unhappy with it, yes. It, then well, well, how about the, the idea that if you're fighting a girl over with, if you're fighting over a girl with Alex Jones, just tap out. And she's well, interested in Alex Jones, and what, you know. <laughs> so what's the when point? You've, you've never met this person. How hard is it to end the relationship with someone you have never met? But with Lon, that's all he's ever known, isn't it? So for him at that stage, online relationships are relationships. It's like it always interests me when the catfish goes, "Oh, the robot." More specifically, go get a condom. Not right now, baby. I'm <laughs> mad. Like, is that real sex Earth to Lon? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So gross when he met when he 
I already yeah. took care of that by myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. You're thinking, oh, I already took care of that problem, whatever he yeah. said. Or <laughs> I'm fucking you tonight. Yeah. Yes, oh. Tiffany, that, that line just came into my mind. I, I remember he got on a call with Casey. I think it was the first Casey. And he said, oh, I'm so ready to fuck you tonight. It, it, that's not fucking Lauren. That's not having sex. That's just talking. That's masturbating, my friend. <laughs> what about his it's idea of thing. of spicing up his masturbation by uh, by cutting the tip off the a condom and then putting some you kind of a penis just made me spit water all over my fucking computer, dude. That's what? news to me. I never heard that one. He did what? He said to Casey, uh, Blue Boy. Uh, well, we'll have a special date tonight. I'll I'll cut the tip off of a condom and put the penis pouch over that. And I'm trying to think. Okay, what does that do? What I mean makes it special. That, is that for her or for him? I mean, I don't. What what's the mechanics behind that? I I don't understand. I, what do you do after that? I don't understand. But, but shit like that is what entertains me when he says shit like that. And then, 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 then there was a there was one where he sent her a penis pic, and apparently she had ignored it and uh, was talking to somebody I can't remember. And he went crazy. Oh yeah, that he, was he went, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, yeah. yeah. He he went, my call. Wait, I sent yeah. you that. You now call. scroll up and look at it and tell me about it. you know scroll up and look at. It. And then the Jamie said uh, Jamie said back, uh, well you send me a thousand of these things a day. I mean what the fuck. But he was hurt. He was hurt because his yeah, exposed hurt. penis wasn't mentioned or or it wasn't acknowledged in any way. I, I'm grateful, so... which she is. <laughs> no, no, scroll up and look it. at that. The penis pouch really cracks me up because he thought you would use that during sex. This like what knitted, it? fucking crocheted. I, it's a fabric. I don't even know what it is. It's I don't a, know what it's a fabric. It, is. it looks like a point curse, purse, and you put your penis in it. Probably. I, yeah. I don't know what it's. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know what the purpose is for it. I don't know if Amazon, it's a stripping thing. Anyway. It okay. is not for sex, though. <laughs> I can assure you. Of no, that. it no would just be a it would fabric. Just be yeah. Yeah, and it, it's funny. He thought, how would that even work? Just. The logistics of it alone. How are you going to shove a fabric covered? Penis and why cut in the it? why cut the condom end off too? What's the point of that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> don't because try and think him, why that is. It's best not condom... to let your mind go down that road. Well, yeah, because according to him, the condom is what makes it feel like the real deal. He, he and Casey had a whole conversation about why the condom is preferable during masturbation and I can't repeat it in that call they say a certain phrase over and over and it's disgusting um what but, tell me. so you I... think that the tip of the condom would be very important right right yeah I, 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 I don't wonder know what he's if it's on. I wonder if it's his um I don't know version of coming inside of her <laughs> Via oh, the phone. Oh, well, that you could do that with a, you could feel the same sensation from a condom, couldn't you? Why would you I know. I, I, well, because then it's not it's not contained. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah, yeah. He wanted warm air. air. <laughs> I hate that even I even thought of that. That's disgusting. The the sex <laughs> life of Lauren Armstrong isn't it amazing? I guess well, he, he needed he that. Would, he would um, put it in the pouch. It would be inside the pouch, right? Inside, well, you know, the cut off. He, to, he cuts to avoid off the, the mess. End, and and then puts puts it in the penis pouch. Now here's the thing, though. Know. He thought that he was makes so a big special. Mess. He, he thought that was <laughs> such a special date that they were going to both look forward to. He really, really thought that was special. This conversation and, and me, is disgusting. <laughs> I don't fucking get it. It's, we need to class it up a little bit. <laughs> Have you got any well, ideas? I'll just say, before we class it up, I'll just say, it's very amusing to me that he thinks he makes such a mess that he needs a condom to catch it because it's something that a single tissue couldn't take care of. Jesus. I don't want to think about it anymore, but... 
Mm, mm, like, mm, mm. and stop. <laughs> oh, it could have been worse. I expected Shin to say, that's my girl. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Don't give him ideas. That's my girl. That's my girl. Oh, I just got disgusting goosebumps. I just got a horrible <laughs> feeling. I hate, I hate that. <laughs> it, it's like he's working out in a gym when he's jerking off. I don't, I don't know. It's uh. Urgh. All right, we'll we'll class it up a bit. Um, I think that uh, this is kind of going into you know whether it's a public service or not. You know what's going on, but a lot of people think that um, by the catfish doing this, this saves a lot of real. <laughs> people in his life i don't agree with that and i'll tell you why i don't either i think i think lauren is a, is a serial cheater to begin with number one mm -hmm. and don't think for a second that just because he's talking to a catfish he's not out there stalking real women we already know that so i don't think that curbs that behavior i think what public service it does uh hold is for purposes of probation believe it or not i know we shit on probation all the time this is a, a, an additional resource for them to monitor him. And more importantly, they could figure out what he actually feels and what he actually thinks. And he cannot bullshit them after them hearing this in his class. And that's why he's kept in class. I think this is that is the public service that the catfishing has done. I think it has kept him in class, not for his reasons, thinking he needs a real relationship. He's got to he's got to learn to say no. Well, so no. It's because the catfish, um, excuse me, probation knows how he really is from these phone calls. And he can't go up there and bullshit them anymore. He's stuck, you know, <laughs> unless there's a, a call that comes out where he comes out totally accepting responsibility and mea culpa. And I was so wrong. And this is the last time you'll hear from me. I've got to start working on myself. There's never going to be a call like that. So I this think is even the if there, I think if there was even a call like that, that. The fact that there would be a call with a catfish that would once again be released on the internet is enough. I don't think it's necessarily the content. Although I know that at one point during Ramona, they did play a phone call where he was intoxicated and they were asking him about that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, I think the whole point is that he continues to engage in the behavior that they don't want him to do, which would be speaking to people that they don't know. They're unable to verify who anybody is, how old anybody is. That's the point. It's not that, a matter of- important. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so I think even if he were to have a phone call where he is ex saying exactly what somebody should say when right. they've- been through everything that it wouldn't matter he's still engaging in the behavior to to do exactly what they don't want him to do right but when he's talking about things where he's not taking responsibility where he's blaming on other people blaming it on his siblings all this bullshit you know he can't go in and try to pass the class and in, in, in letting and in, in saying the things that they want him to say because they'll know how he really feels that's what I'm, that's basically it's almost like a lie detector you know, it's yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know? truly, I don't know how much they hear. I don't think they've listened to everything. I, that I don't would think be they've impossible. listened to as much as what people think. It's like, it's not. I, I don't do. think it's. I don't think it's as important to them as what you believe. Because it's like all they need to know is he's failing rape class. He's a pain in the ass. He's getting catfished, and he might. He may or may still not drink. That's that's pretty much all they need to know. They know he's dangerous. They deal with people like Lauren all the time. You know, they've just got to keep him under control to a certain degree, to the extent that they're allowed to, because they have to observe his rights. They can't just, you know, it's like I've said before, I don't think it would be a stretch to keep Lauren institutionalised, but you can't, we can't live in a society. I, I don't want to get into that kind of debate, but, you know, it could be said that we can't live in a society where every single person who's ever done, a, you know, people, certain people have got to be allowed to be given the opportunity to rehabilitate. Lawn has proved, Lawn will never change. We know that, and there are certain people that can't. Um, but, you know, I'm only theorising, Shin. It, you, you might be right, but I just think with the amount of stuff that comes out, what good does it serve them to listen to it all? Yeah. Oh, by the way, count of three. I, I agree. You know, obviously, when the catfish are 
using his time, he's not out there with other women. I'm talking about when he's off the phone with the catfish. And from what I understand, the catfish have been spending little and little time with him, and they can't spend all day like like Ramona used to, or you know, for nine hours at a time. You know, obviously they're protecting society then, but you know, now they give him like an hour hour a day, a uh, half hour after I was supposed to, you know, whatever it is. Um, so I don't even agree with that, though. To be honest with you, I think having him on the phone isn't protecting anybody. Yeah. I don't think that you know, and and certainly that's not. The it didn't keep him out of Walmart, did it? Stop stalking those women, asking them if they wanted jobs. Yeah, of course. I mean, when when they're speaking to him, he's home anyway. So, or he's working, or you know how he used to do with Winnie. But so either way, he's he, not going to miss an opportunity in real life to stalk somebody. You know, no, absolutely. Gonna, well, think about talking. think about when the woman showed up to look at the shed that she was going to live in, right? Lauren's right. friend, or Roy's friend. When she showed up, she was supposed to, or he was supposed to, be on the phone with Jamie. But all of a sudden, a call didn't he happen. He did. Yeah. He never called. He called after she left and he was all pissed that would have been off. great if we heard that oh it would have oh. it would have been fantastic but it was another woman that yeah. lorne would have been viewing as his next prey so you know he he's only going to be on the phone when it he wants to be you know so it's not a matter of oh i'm i'm not gonna be interested in this woman or attack this woman or expose myself, whatever, you know, he would be doing. Um, I'm not going to start my grooming process with her um, because I have somebody on the phone. He's just not going to be on the phone. It's just like when he would go radio silent and we would know that he was at Tony's. We would mm -hmm. know. And he, he would say, oh, I'm going to be home. Roy's coming over to work on the trailer or whatever. Nope. If he's radio silent, he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And he would get busted every single time because then he would get on the phone and he would be drunk again. <laughs> yeah. We're just chopping wood. Zabram, um, you mentioned that uh, you're asked whether probation has to be in agreement on him getting off. Let's put it this way. Um, it would be the, the most lopsided uh, contest if probation was against him getting off and he tried to uh terminate uh, early terminate his probation uh without their agreement no he needs them to agree to, to agree to it i doubt very much that, that uh there's going to be any experts that are going to have a file as thick as probation on him uh that's going to be convincing <laughs> to the judge yeah and i mean cause <clears throat> let's consider the fact too that he's violated several times he went back to prison for violating and he's he asked at that hearing if he could get off of it if they could take it off of lifetime so mm -hmm. it's not as if now i know that that getting off of probation wouldn't be something that's on the table i mean i suspect it wouldn't be considering his crime right um right. but i think that he doesn't even have a case how can you say you do good on probation when you just got out of prison for violating said probation? How can well, he helped his mom and, take garbage and he out. Tries, Oh, I know. He tries to argue that point, though, which I think is really funny, is that he says, mm -hmm. well, I don't do anything wrong. Really? You don't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's what he's in call <laughs> for. No, he actually goes further and says, I do good for society. He does. He does. <laughs> Got his mum to say it on his behalf, which is even What do you funny. think, Amanda? Does he do good for society? <laughs> I think he does wonders I think for, he society, does good for society. I think he's still a danger to society, as we can see when he went to Walmart and targeted mm -hmm. a young girl to offer her a job. Mm -hmm. He has yep. no business talking to young women. He, no, he, he doesn't does. have the right anymore to try to gauge on his own whether or not she's of legal age or not. If she's under 40, he should stay away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say yeah. if she's way, female, what money does he, he have should to stay away. Anybody. What, what money he does he have to offer not, anybody? He well? didn't make shit from that website. And he's offering it to every woman he talks to. You want to make some residual income? How, Lauren? If, if you can make money off it, why aren't you doing it? Yeah, well, it just hasn't just wanted, happened it, yet. Well, it was just it, it like me, with 
-hmm. with Debbie, he wanted to do the charity thing. Remember, we've talked about this before. He wanted to um, raise money somehow. I can't remember. Some selling t-shirts or something stupid. And he's going to donate the money to all these charities, including Chris Hansen. And he only (laughs) wanted to do it if Debbie was involved. Mm -hmm. And when Debbie said, no, I don't have time for that bullshit, do it with somebody else, he was no longer interested. It's just a way to tie him to that woman. It's yeah. a reason yeah. to have to have something to, to talk to her about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and he, he does that um, with his, you know, with his friends, I, however many that would be. But he did that with Dan and Emma, too, um, when they were supposed to go up and see him at some point oh you want to want to oh, give you 50 percent right, of the profits right. of the yard sale yeah, yeah. yeah he always why does. why i know exactly buy their love that's exactly right it's an incentive talk to me you well, make some money also the new business he started the uh the robot got him to start that new business i guess uh b and b now i guess it is septic service whatever he's got the cars oh, yeah. going and everything else but then what he does is he 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 signs up for this one of those uh, rip off uh, corporate uh, assistants, you know, on on uh, online where, mm-hmm. you know, they, they helped help him uh, put his corporate papers together, get his EIN number together, all that kind of stuff, which you anybody can do themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. But they, so he charges them at, and they're charging him like forty dollars, you know, twenty five dollars a week or something like that on top of that. And so he, then he starts talking about how oh, we're going to, I'm going to have a 401k. I'm going to have a better health insurance in yours. Jamie, you may want to look at mine and, and compare it, you know, uh, you know, all these, all these benefits that any startup company doesn't even think about, you know, he, he's got all of this stuff. He, he's got, he's already in the hole before he has one, $1 of uh, revenue. It's oh, just, definitely. Yeah. He's just, oh. Like, but it's almost like a 12 year old talking about starting a business the, the, I was listening to one of the calls when he um, I can't remember who the catfish was where they were discussing the beanie baby thing and he was like well I saw uh, a beanie baby was going for 75,000 on eBay and the catfish said well what did it did it end up getting sold I don't know it's like well, anybody can sure. fucking advertise if, anything for People are selling farts in a jar for thousands. It doesn't mean people are going to buy it. People will. And he just he couldn't equate the two. As, how much money did he waste on the Beanie Baby thing? It was a few hundred dollars. Hundreds. Yeah. 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 He went. He went ballistic. But I. But the fart in the jar on it. Giving your date a gift of a fart in the jar. That's. Yeah. That that was just a kind of. A, a, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> No, he did talk about that, though, taking Casey on a date to the mall where they would go to Spencer's Gift and buy a fart jar. Right. That was his right. plan. <laughs> oh, that sounds hot. Such a romantic guy. He, he, really knows how to, how to, he really knows how to treat a classy lady like Casey Moreau, doesn't he? But again, it's so think- juvenile. Yeah, well, I think he confused Casey with Winnie a lot. Winnie would appreciate a, a fart jar. She would find she that would. funny. Yeah, and it's would. just like when Kate, uh, Winnie would appreciate the fact that Maine is mostly white people. Casey Morrow, he didn't know that. <laughs> he didn't know if she would, if, if that would be a, a... I know, that was, he really stuck, he really put himself out there with that one. Oh man, that was I didn't so think I heard it right. Stupid. No, yeah, and again, it's because I think he was confusing Casey with Winnie. Because when he was once Casey, he gets the characters mixed up in his mind. Wow. He has a different sense of humor, I think, than <laughs> probably a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that Lauren will say that are legitimately funny. Um, of course, I can't think of an example. Oh, the one ball, have a half a kid. Without the one yeah. ball. Oh, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Um, pretty, that was pretty witty, wasn't it? <laughs> was, but that's rare. I mean, he will, he'll say, you know, stuff like the fart in the jar thing and he'll be laughing, you yeah. know, the whole it, time. And you can hear him too um, when he's a lot, when he, he's doing the yard sale or when he, you hear him talking to somebody at work or whatever, he's laughing all the time yeah. at everything he says. No there, matter was what a, 
a startling moment and someone pointed it out in the comments. I'm sorry if you're listening, I can't remember who it was, but there was a, I think it was the latest robot call and Lorne, and someone said and pointed out a timestamp and said the first time Lorne's had self-awareness and it said, I'm going slightly off here, but it, it said like, Lorne goes, oh, what did you like, said to himself to the robot, what did you do last night, Lorne? Oh, I was listening to my girlfriend talking about getting her ass waxed or something. Yeah, and it was like self awareness. Yeah, something like that. And it was like, wow. He kind of, at that point, he was able to examine how ludicrous his situation was, but he couldn't equate that to the <laughs> fact that it's fake. He couldn't link the two, or at hasn't least didn't want to. Hasn't that happened to all of us, though, Andrew? Have, hasn't that happened to all of us? <laughs> well, that's true. Girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But yeah. you know, the other thing. Uh, you know, he would say something like Roy would drop a cigarette and he would say, is that slippery or heavy? You know, <laughs> but he, I, I, I seem to think that he would, he probably says the same joke over and over again. Um, those kinds of jokes. He's got a lot of those little local yokel jokes that he uses a lot. Sure. But yeah. the one yeah. ball, you know, the half a kid was, was a good joke. I it thought. was, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we get, hey, you know what, that, we're giving actually Lon some kind of credit here. I don't know if I'm on the James Stain side, but um, it's not credit. I mean, no, you know, no, every no, no, no. Even a blind squirrel finds he an said something once in a while. funny, right? But is that giving him credit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, because everything, everything that well, he it wouldn't have been funny because 50 years. Yeah, it was it was in the middle of the delusion. That's what made it funny. That's the whole. <laughs> well, that's his know, life. Was, everything that happens paper. is in the middle of a delusion. <laughs> this whole life yeah. is. Um, there was the the kind of topic that I wanted to talk about. It was kind of twofold. So it's kind of like, why do we find it entertaining, and what does that say about us? So we've kind of touched upon it because it's. But there's moments when I listen to it, and I can't speak for for you three or anybody in the chat. Is where I go. What? Why? What does it say about me that I enjoy this? So there are moments when I start to feel sorry for him as a human being and then remember it's him and then don't. And there are also mm-hmm. moments where the Rhoda funeral highlights it perfectly, maybe because of the brilliant animation, but the whole ludicrousness of that scenario, when I'm listening to it and laughing at it, there isn't a part of me that feels sorry for him. It's like, if you're that fucking stupid, you deserve to get fucked with. There's part of me that says that. It's like... It's it's kind of like, listen, we're all born with a certain level of intelligence, but I almost feel like it's your responsibility to not be that dumb, like he almost has a choice. He's just choosing to be that stupid. Um, but there are occasions where I just think, like, you know, when he's really being fucked with, and he's, it's his whole life, like, why am I enjoying somebody getting fucked with so much? What does that say about me? Do you ever, I know... Do you ever have those moments? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, there's no. a little bit of sadism. I think we might be a little bit sadistic. In I some think ways, justice. But... I, I don't think it's sadism. Yeah. I think it's justice. You know, it's a sense of justice. He all the shit that he gets away with. He's not really got away oh. with much, has he? Let's be honest. Say it again. He hasn't really got away with much, has he? No, well, I guess every time he's happy, <laughs> I want him to be unhappy. Uh, it's to me, it's it's. I don't, I don't know. A lot, a lot of times when I'm listening, you know, I I do with with Amanda's with Amanda does. I kind of put it on his background, but I'm not listening half the time too. But it still has this soothing. Yeah, um, I get that. Very soothing edge to it. Anyway, you know, um, it it feels like okay. That's that's how I need to fill up you know, part of my sensories, my senses here, you know, have that in the background. And then I would clue in on something that they'd be talking about. And it, and it, you know, a lot of times I find out that I, I may have not, I may have heard the call before, but I wasn't listening. And then I'm hearing something for the first time or actually the second time, but I'm finally listening and I, I crack up, you know? So I don't know. It just seems to be, it seems to fit into my, uh, my ambiance. You know, in the background. The thing is, as well, well like, sorry, Tiffany, we're going to say something. 
No, I was just going to answer the question. Um, I, at the very beginning, I thought about why I laugh when he cries because I would legitimately go back and listen, re-listen to those few seconds. You know, you mean in the uh, in the, um, the the sting footage. No, in the Ramona. Oh, sorry. Specifically with Ramona. Um, Do you remember yeah, when so I, I mean, called you up, <laughs> Tiffany, and had a, a bit of a cycle, a bit of a conscience crisis? I said, I listened to this wee boy call today, and Lorne was crying, and you went, oh, right, I bet that's funny. And I was like, no, <laughs> I, I meant that <laughs> it's cruel. <laughs> you were like, oh, right, I was thinking that must have been funny. <laughs> it was like, we were just laughing yeah. about it, weren't we? And I was like, yeah. And it, it, yeah. yeah but don't be so hard on you yourself because what he's crying about typically is something that's laughable you know it's not something like oh i'm being picked on by all these catfish oh i wish people would leave me alone let me live my life it's not that it's the fucking dan or or something that's going on in the catfish world that's making him cry so yeah it's not and, real. And, and quite often it's just what he's going to do at the time for what he thinks is going to work to get somebody to either back off of him or to change their behavior or to have a better conversation. It's, it's just something that he likes to pull out when he needs it. So you'll hear him in calls. He'll go through cycles where he will go from being a normal, I guess, but then he will get angry and then he'll get really pissed off. And if that doesn't work to get whoever he's talking to, to stop what they're doing, he's going to start to cry. Yeah. Right. And then it turns off immediately when it, it continues. So he's got to do something else. So he just continues to, to keep doing that. And, it, you know, we've talked about it before, but that's probably what he's always done. He's very quick with the tears. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he's I done it in all the catfishes, hasn't it? He's done it with a robot where they goes, Lauren, are you crying? What do you care? You don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. I so I, I think the reaction he gets in real life are people are like, first of all, shocked that a grown man's crying in front of him like that. And so he thinks that that somehow is receptive. That's a good thing for him to do now. You know, it's OK to show your feelings. He's got that big thing going on, too, where he's talking about the sensitive guy is the real man, you know, the all that bullshit. No, but, sure. but again, but again, what, like when he cries about something that's real, like like when Tony died, for instance, you would think that he, he'd have some level of sadness something legitimate in the outside the catfish world where you could actually, you know, possibly <laughs> feel sympathetic. But then what does he do? He starts talking about Tony and the worst shit, talking him in the worst well, fucking always way. He was a great guy. He ripped people off though. You know, then it becomes funny again. You know, um, his tears yeah. are like, what, what is he crying about? What about the road of funeral? I know I keep going on about that, but that is a remarkable piece of entertainment where you go, uh, Lauren, would you like to say a few words? I love you, Rhoda. <laughs> it's just like so, it's so ridiculous. That he's scenario. You can't take his tears seriously. It's like he's part of, no. it's like he's acting. It's like he's a fantastic actor that's part of that whole scenario. That it, yeah. It's so, if you played that to somebody who didn't know anything about it, they'd swear it's all put on and he, he's part of it, I believe. It's like it's like Mike Aganita in uh, Fargo, you know. I don't know if you guys are familiar, familiar with that movie. It's no. just like that. But, Some people um, do think Lauren must be in on it because it's all just so ridiculous. We're both crying. So where, yeah, where do I don't... we think the tears were from when he was crying for Rhoda? For Rhoda, is he he's, just he's going along with? He's it. going along. Is he going trying to be part of the funeral? He's trying to put on these yeah. emotions. Because what I thought was interesting is like these tears are coming on. Who's he crying for? This character that that is so ludicrous that no normal person could conceive that that character is real. They've got Embrys playing like six or seven characters at the same time. It's like, <laughs> like that funeral goes out like, shut up, Victor. And then so she's yeah. playing herself. She's playing Winnie. She's playing the dead person. She's playing I mean, the dead person doesn't speak. But oh, baby. It's like, uh, even Matilda. like there's there's so much going on. And he's like, <laughs> I love you, Rhoda. It's like, who, who are you crying for? Who are you like, there's no... It's 
his level of reality is so fickle. It's so. That's why we find his crying funny. I think that's that's what distinguishes him from every everyone else who we see crying. We kind of you know. Yeah, I think you're right though. Because it's not because real, is it? Because crying is delusional. It's about delusional things, right? Well, it's about, I, I, and, and they're hilarious No, it is. Things. It is. They're hilarious. And also, you know, just what we know about them that, from seeing right. him for all of these years. Right. You combine um, that. Exactly. But I have to say, at the same time, when he cries, like, for example, at, at the sting or in the interrogation room, that's funny. Yep. That's what and those are people just said in the chat. How long do I gotta be there? Sorry. To to <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's definitely true, Slothcat. Um, you know, I hope she thought it was funny because <laughs> it's so it's so crazy. But it does sound like it's made up. It sounds like a video was made. You know, of, well, it of was made up. There was just yeah. one person no, no, who didn't no, realize it. it. Right. Oh, dude. Well, dude. no, that is what true. What about? What about when he cried in court, Andrew? That was real. But even that wasn't real, was it? We, su I mean, well, you know, we, it, I guess. we were but both were in hysterics, or at least you were being yeah. far too professional and, and just like yourself to, you were there with your yellow legal pad, and I was just like. <laughs> I had to keep my head down, bro. If I looked up, I would have cracked up. I, I, I would have had the same difficulty because I think that it's funny. It's funny yeah. that his life is in the toilet. <laughs> Truly. This was the hardest I, I think I've it ever is. heard him cry, though. It's, it's he, that. He and then, and, for his life. And sure, absolutely. And that's <laughs> funny because he's an asshole and he fucking deserves it. Right. Oh, do you remember when, Tiff, I spoke to you a few weeks ago and um, I was telling you about um, one of the chat log reading videos that me and Amanda James and Shin did and you don't like doing those with us sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And I was telling you about the bit where he mentions, and I had trouble going through this and I think we all did, where he mentions to Kayla um, about the white stuff. And he, I'd not really grasped this before because we, I've not gone over the chat log in this much detail. And he says to Kayla, do you want to watch me um, or something along these lines? Do you mm -hmm. want to watch the white stuff come out? Which basically means I want you to watch me tug off, yeah. which is right. a terrible thing. Right. And you got like really mad when I told you that. And you were like, I'm mm -hmm. glad he's going to get fucked over for the rest of his life. It kind of stirred up a lot of emotions in you, didn't it? Oh, it always does. Even you just saying that right now brings mm -hmm. in so much rage. Mm -hmm. I I hate him so much. Yeah. It bring yeah. it brings up a lot. Yeah. Like just I didn't just mean to do that, by the way. <laughs> red anger. <laughs> red anger. Sorry. It's your fault now. No, There's but, but that's that true. That I mean mm -hmm. Yeah, when you when you see this shit and in you see the things that he did during that time which once again he doesn't think anyone else is going to see it is absolutely infuriating so that's why his tears make me laugh his legitimate yep. tears when he's in court when he's in the interrogation room like a fucking bitch in yep. front of those detectives grown men you're crying yep. <laughs> crying and whimpering the whole yeah. time and that is fantastic the only thing that i don't like about that interrogation video is that you can't see his face yeah yeah who the hell thought of that idea i said this before the thing that lauren cries about uh, first of all what do adults cry about when they cry we cry when we're sad or when we're happy those are two things right the thing that lauren cries about when he's sad and when he's happy, but also when he's frustrated, when he's angry. Those are things that children cry about. Well, I've got to say, I do cry when I'm mad. <laughs> do you really? I, I do. Oh if I get if I get really mad, it depends on what it is. But it, if I'm so upset, then I will start to cry. Yeah. So well, maybe I'm sounds like to. sadness <laughs> might be creeping in on that situation. I don't know, maybe. But you ever cry when you're frustrated? No, I don't. I wouldn't say fraud. It's it's really angry. Um, if I'm yeah. if I'm really going at somebody for something that upsets me, then I will start to cry. Yeah, and, and the other thing that children cry about is when they get injured, like 
I got hit by a ball today. I cried. So sure. Yeah, but the, but those those scenarios for for Lorne are so delicious. Yeah. And you've, you've kind of touched upon something interesting there, Tiffany, about when he's in court. And it's kind of made me realize that, well, not really, obviously, you know, I was there. I know how he behaved, but I was just too busy in humor and just hysterics to sign of just think about the total ramifications of what he was doing. But what he's doing is he's behaving so far away from what a man does. A man takes responsibility for his actions the the success in your life is determined by how much responsibility you take overall for every aspect of your life and the most successful ones in all of those areas are the ones that take the most responsibility for it he takes zero and what do, not only that everybody's free to do what they want in their life as long as you're not hurting other people do you want to sit and binge watch netflix all day crack on um but not there's anything wrong with that, but you get the point. It's not you could do something more productive. But like right. he's whimpering in court. Oh, feel sorry for me. Oh, I'm going to get my mum to speak for me. There isn't mm-hmm. one shred, and it all goes in along with this zero integrity that he's got. But no dignity as well. And that's another thing no. of, of his no. character is how he sends these the catfishes all these ridiculous pictures of his butthole and like of, of all these different yeah i mean the sexy lawn photo is very funny but the ones of like all these his dick in different lights and all that it's like there is not one part of lawn that that is admirable there's not one part of him that you could identify with as a normal person like not one part it's like what amanda james said um about he's, he's everything uh, repulsive to a woman um, and I can yeah. only see it from a man's perspective, and it's like, as a guy, you you know, you wouldn't want anything to do with him. It's like I, I really believe that if you bumped into him, if he was a guy who was a good judge, even a slightly good judge of character, you'd be like, There's something not fucking right with this guy, immediately. Right. Um, do you think he's ever been complimented on anything? I mean, I think maybe he's singing, but that's about it. But he's always trying to get a compliment out of his catfish. He's always trying to get them to say something positive about him. I don't think he's ever ha- he he ever has that. Yeah, probably not even no, from his I mom. Think. No, I mean, what I would he be complimented about? No, that's like what, what I'm saying. There's nothing you have really. Well, okay, I'm sorry. The blue eyes, but they're shaped like mongoloids. That was kind of a compliment, right? That's not. No. <laughs> but that's about it. But he is so thirsty for some positive uh, attention, something, you know. He, he, I, I believe that this man walks around never having any po- anything positive being thrown at him in his entire life. Oh, the two plastic trophies. I'm sorry about that, Pee Wee. That's right. He's got those. <laughs> right. <laughs> you imagine that must have been the mic. The, one of the most uh, proud moments of his life when he got that thing. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And like talking about like how Lon, you know, kind of his kind of intelligence and how he doesn't, you know, see anything and he's kind of responsible for that. I don't think anything highlights that more. And we have spoke about it, but it's definitely worth oh, repeating. Is, is the, um, the thruple call where you've got the K- <laughs> K- <laughs> you've got just a screen He's that's got Casey it. Moreau written on it, right? And then suddenly a smudge appears. <laughs> Somebody in a wig and you can't like with Vaseline on the fucking lens. And then <laughs> you've got the voice of a robot. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Jamie piped in, that's what I was blurred I completely too, wasn't lost it? my shit at that point. It's like any normal guy in that scenario, <laughs> he'd just be so funny. But there's this guy who was in prison for five years. <laughs> it's like his whole, his whole life. And not only that, this is Casey version number fucking seven. <laughs> like the seventh incarnation of the original Kayla, if you will. Like, if you think about how many different people have played that fucking character. (laughs) 
Well, Andrew, <laughs> when he did that call, the Green Goblin call, where she, her face was blurred out too, and he accepted it. <laughs> he did, yeah, he did it. Accept it. That that call was crazy too. And she would get, she would just put her eye up to put her eye on it. You know? Hi, <laughs> hi. I don't know was if it was Winnie or if it was supposed to be Casey. I can't remember. But I don't remember which one. Obviously, it couldn't be. It couldn't be Amber. So yeah, she would just either put like something over the camera, or she put her eyeball like right up there. Baby, you got to step back. You got to step back. I see you. <laughs> so crazy. Got the huge smile on his face. Oh yeah, he he was he was really happy. That during <laughs> that call as well, something that like it made me laugh, but it also infuriated me. Where Lon lights up that cigarette as soon as like oh. the robot said, oh, oh. "I was having a date with her, whatever the fuck it was." Well, that's like, just typical, Lauren. Yeah. I mean, he never stopped smoking. No, that's, the pack was yeah. right there in front of him. Of course it was. Thanks a lot, of Jamie. It was. He never stopped. It's just like with Ramona. Do you think he really went vegan? No. Of course he well, did it. Wait, wait a minute. That's why he sent pictures he of school to her, right? <laughs> he tried. Isn't that why she wanted to see pictures of the school? To see if I don't know. I'm not sure yeah, about that. To see if, yeah, I think that was the story. I don't think there's ever a convincing <laughs> reason to send such a picture, but... No. Yeah. But... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> So what does it say about me, I think, was the original question. Ah. Well, all I... of us, but yes, know. you can certainly answer this question. In fact, let me, okay. just answer, let me ask you a different question before you answer that one. <coughs> mm -hmm. At the time you were talking to Lorne, what were you... And I know a lot has changed because that was a long time ago. At that time, what were you getting out of it, if you don't mind answering that? Were you just enjoying simply fucking with him? Because you were as angry as what you were... When I mentioned the Kayla chat to you a few minutes ago. Uh, what do you mean when I was talking to him? Because there's a, do you mean a scenario like when I was yelling at him or? No, overall. So I suppose what were you overall? getting, what were you getting out of it? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's just a weird interest in what this person is going to say. Yeah. The, the entire, you know, looking at the entire story, and not just, you know, focusing on the things that really make me angry, but there's that other side of it too, that's so bizarre and also not knowing anybody like Lauren, which is great, but not knowing anybody like him, never understanding how someone can place themselves, themselves into this catfishing scenario again and again and again, year after year. And, and not have any type of, of uh, improvement, you know, for themselves. There's been no development for himself to get out of this. You know, he's the only one who can stop it. You know, like I was saying mm -hmm. earlier, people are still going to call. They're still going to send shit in the mail. They're still going to stop by, you know, whatever ends up happening would be a hundred percent on them because that's what they're doing. Right. So he doesn't have control over that. The only thing he could do is like move or, you know, change his number and all of that kind of stuff, but that's unrealistic. That's not going to happen. But for him, he, all he has to do is not entertain any of it, throw everything away. Don't answer the calls. You know, as soon as somebody calls you from, from a strange number and they they sound strange or they're making some kind of a weird, you know, request or a strange conversation, then it disconnect immediately and block, you know, but it, he hasn't done that. I don't know if he'll do it from now on, no idea, but he has yet to do it. And even so, even if this couple that went down to visit him most recently um, even, even so he should never have spoken to them. They should never have been allowed onto his property. They should have never have been allowed to, um, hang out with him or do any of that. He should have cut it off immediately. If he did, then that would have demonstrated that he may have learned something eventually, you know, after all this time, because that's all that it's going to take. He never should have trusted them. I don't care if it ends up working out for his benefit. 
and they end up really being his friend or if he's getting trolled again and somewhere down the line there's going to be a whole new uh you know a whole set of material that's going to come from it but he should have cut it off immediately you know when somebody says oh no you can trust me do you trust that person no there's a woman of course not well but that's the problem that that's what it means to say that he hasn't had any kind of development through all the shit that's happened to him think about what happens every single time his catfish world and his reality collide it's a disaster Mm -hmm. every single time every single time these people are brought up to his class to his counselor to his probation to his family everyone thinks that he's an idiot Everyone says, are you serious? Is this honestly happening again? We've been going through this for years. Like, how is this any different? And it never should get to the opportunity of showing itself to be any different. Because again, when this couple reached out to him, whether they did it in in a genuine way or being disingenuous, especially at the very beginning, but perhaps if they developed a friendship, it never should have gotten to that point. He should have stopped it immediately because once again, there are people who came from this TCAP world. Well, we're talking about a man with no options, no options at all. No, understood, but there there would have to be some kind, you know, if he ever wants this situation to improve for himself, he needs to take steps to improve it. It's not just a matter of, well, they need to stop writing me. They need to stop getting in contact with me. Okay. But that's not going to stop. You can't do anything about that. So how about if you stop answering? You said it to Casey. I think it was Casey in one of the calls recently where um, she's like saying, well, why are you, do you allow this to happen? It's my fault that people he can't be it. honest. Like, dude, you completely right. missing exactly. the point. He misses the point. Exactly. He wants it. That's why he wants it. He, he doesn't. If, if suddenly one day no letters came in, no phone calls came in, he was anonymous again. He would hate that. I think he would mm-hmm. hate that. He needs some form of attention. Going back to Tiffany, um, what, and again, I'm speculating about what you may have gotten out of this too, or what, what appeals, uh, what about this appeals to you when you were doing it? Mm-hmm. I got the impression you liked to deep dive on him uh, to get into some of those questions, like the Molly question and all that other stuff. And I got the impression that you had to deal with all that other bullshit just to get there because you couldn't do that every day. I don't, I wouldn't think. Is that, am I right no. about that? Um, no? Well, I think, I think that when the opportunity presented itself to say those things or ask those questions, then yeah, definitely. Because I would love to know, um, mm. especially about Molly, knowing from, from the very beginning that he has other victims. This Kayla thing was never a one-off situation. He does because he mentioned her in the chat log. He forgot about right. that. Right, but he right. mentioned her. So the fact that she was on MySpace saying that was an ex and all that, yes, 100%. And that's why the Kayla decoy asked about that. So there was definitely going to be, and there's more behind her as well. Not only just Melissa, but there's there's whoever was willing to talk. Now, I'm not going to say that there's hundreds because or that he was swimming in well, it. There are like, definitely others. No, yeah, there definitely there's definitely others. definitely He, he played others. the numbers game, though. He, he just shot sure. down everyone. Oh, definitely. You know, when he said when he said that Molly reached out to him first, I don't believe it for a second. He goes into chat rooms, he looks and see who's there, and he sends messages. He said right. that is why he got he said to that. Kayla. Yeah. Yeah. He said that. So th- there's no reason to believe that that's not what he did when yeah. he he went there. So yes, those those conversations to me were interesting to have just out of curiosity. You know, what does he have to say? Now he's on the phone. And he can be cornered, essentially. So is he going to keep talking or is he just going to hang up? You know, who knows? But he happened to keep talking. But really, at the beginning, in, in the other the other calls that are just silly, that's just trolling. Can I ask, though, and I have asked you this before, but I'm always interested to listen to your answer. When you're trying to take him through it bit by bit, connect the dots in his brain and say, no, I'm not going to let you go down that road. Why did you go there? I want to wear the truth. You're not going to get better until what? What was it? Was it your? Your? It, this is how it seemed to me, and I'm like answering the question for you. But like, it's almost like you're so frustrated that someone can be so dumb 
and and dangerous. You're trying to sort of put something right, or how? What was it behind that? I think it, it was just trying to understand, you know, because his when he starts to do that, when he starts to get his defenses, his defense and, and his coping mechanisms are so obvious because they're shutting down and not talking, changing the subject, deflecting, hanging up, crying, those types of things. So if you want to try to get an answer, even though I recognize that it's it's a losing battle, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not really going to happen. But at that time, I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know. I had to to see what is he going to say something because I can be very persistent, and it wouldn't have dropped. So if Lauren would have refused to talk about Molly at that time and have that conversation, it would have happened guaranteed it's just like reading the chat log he read the chat log because i told him to that's it if he wasn't going to do that there wouldn't have been anymore he wasn't going to get what he wanted because in that scenario whoever is the catfish has all of the power so if you say this is how it is he's going to listen and he's going to do exactly what you want him to to a certain extent, <laughs> you know, obviously when it comes to like, you know, if you were to tell him to, to go outside in the middle of the street and take a picture of himself naked, you know, he may, he may struggle with that. But when, when he's really cornered like that and you say, you're doing this, he's going to do it because he yeah. also wants to keep you happy. He wants to keep you on the line. And if, if he goes along with it, then you're going to stay. And that's something that was important to him during those calls. That's the reason why he stuck through it. If, if somebody were to say to you, if Debbie were to say to you, go get your chat log. We're reading it right now. You tell her to go fuck off. He can't say no. I don't know. No, he can't say no. He but knows if, how if to say no now. To, oh my God. Don't even get me started on that. But, but I mean, it's, that's the thing. Um, so you know, it's just a matter of, of during those times to, to see if, if he's going to answer the question honestly and shutting down those stupid coping mechanisms that he has to get you to shut down so that you don't keep pushing him in a heart. It's too hard. I don't want to talk about it. I don't care. You're going to talk about it. Otherwise I'm hanging up until you're ready. And that's it. So yeah. to be completely yeah. honest, it's not a matter of wanting to help him at all. Like I could not give a shit about Lauren. Lauren is a trash human being. And I'm glad that he's not a part of my life or a part of anybody's life that I care about. He's, he's not a good person. He's a predator. Oh yeah. Um, you know, so, but it's a matter of, for myself and, you know, whoever's interested in listening, uh, you know, what, what is he going to say? How is he going to react when somebody doesn't give in to the things that he tries to throw up there to get you to stop? And, you know, when you, when you start to really push it for him, what does he do? So he'll either do those things or say, you get mad at me. Why are you getting mad at me? He knows. He knows. He knows he doesn't have anywhere else to go except for to just give an answer, even if it's not exactly the truth. Because even though the catfish has the power in this situation, it's only over the phone. So there's no way for any of us to really know about Molly or to really know exactly what he's doing you know Winnie was really good about calling him out on that by making it up that she was watching him and he would call himself out which was always really funny but we don't know the exact answers to things so, so there's only so far we can go to be able to dispute what he's telling but at least it's something well to to your point about him always trying to make you happy I think he recognizes that the part of that currency that he can use to make you happy is to try to tell you something about himself that no one else knows, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that's a, that's a big one for him. And that's yeah. when you want to, that's when you get into the Molly discussions and stuff like that, I guess. So he's more than willing and able to do that, you know, uh, to talk about anything. 
because he recognizes that, you know, if I tell you something I've never told anybody else, that's going to make you happy. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine you take advantage of that too. Oh, sure. I mean, he, he throws that in front of everybody. What did he say to Casey that he comes with the toilet? No, no, that was no like he had a wet reveal. dream. He oh, we had a wet dream. dream. That's right. The wet dream yeah. story. I hey, he did nobody... tell though, I, I used to masturbate into the toilet too. That was the first <laughs> I don't time understand. in a phone call. <laughs> she said, hello. He said, hey there, I used to masturbate in the toilet too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So he he wants to make that person feel special um, because he says the same thing to everybody. The same thing. I've never told anybody this. I've never trusted anybody right. more. I've never and he had has, someone by the way. love. Typically, most of the time he has. Like like the thing about yeah. the Tylenol thing. I never told anybody about that. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And didn't didn't he say or she say um, that you told that to Ramona or something? And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I, didn't I know told that. it to Winnie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he even told that to Ramona. Yeah, he he gets confused. Yeah. I mean, why would he remember? He doesn't have, you know, a team of people who know all the answers <laughs> first before he spits them out. He's just worrying about. That's why it's funny to also ask him the same question, like just a little bit later. You get a different answer, yeah. You get a different answer. And you'll see yeah. that a lot with his um, his sexual experience stories. Right. Well, he, it happened with the Rue story. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it was told, he told the story first and then nobody responded. I guess I, I guess nobody knew who was on and who wasn't. And then when finally somebody got on, they said, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't hear it. Can you say that story again? And he did, and it was different. It was different. In many, many different. material ways. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. different. <laughs> I know. It's funny. But yeah. So. so to summarize, it's pretty, it's incredibly entertaining. And there's also, there's like a, this is what I sort of gathered from it. And I've ascertained is <clears throat> from my own self and from listening to, you know, you guys. The kind of, the soul the fickleness of his reality, of, of the way he views the world, it almost makes it um, a victimless crime in a way. It's like he's so fake in his world and his, what he's created, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? It's like, well, he's crying, who cares? You know, um, what else is he going to do? He's getting, <laughs> he's getting fucked around. It's like, what does it matter? It's like you're not you're not affecting someone's life who's doing anything that's even slightly, you know, productive to anybody, are you? You know, mm -hmm. um, and we all get a laugh out of it. And um, but you know, I like I said, I do have moments where he's genuinely upset or as as genuine as he can get. You know what I mean? And it's like what you got to ask yourself is, and we've said this before, if. If anybody else was getting fucked with, like Lorne, or th that wasn't a sex offender, it'd be wrong. But because it's him, mm -hmm. it's deemed as being all right because of who he is. And it's up to each person to decide mm -hmm. whether they think that's correct or not, you know? Yeah, I don't have... He's not a sympathetic character at all. Oh, of course. Most <laughs> most people, just, just for the fact of being human, would be a sympathetic yeah. character, but he's not. Lorne is the exception. Lorne is the exception to every rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it, it, I mean, it, it's provided, the catfishing is provided. It's just, I, I just can't, the, I know I keep babbling on about it, but I'm going to mention it again. The the bit we start singing, chicken wings, chicken wings, in the, in the, Rhoda's funeral bit. Every single time I listen to that, I'm in hysterics. It's just, just, just think about that. It's funny on so many levels, right? You've got this this funeral that's taking place for a fake girl that has a fake mother in a fake relationship in a fake funeral setting, and he's buying into it all, and he's he's just getting upset and he's going along with it. And you've got all these crazy characters. It's it's just so funny, yeah. Um, to me, um, it is funny. <laughs> and we could just go on and on. I mean, we do streams just talking about specific incidents that are quite uh, 
funny. But anyway, uh, we've been going. Uh, just any quick points before we wrap it up from anyone? I don't think so. Amanda James, you've been unusually quiet for the last five minutes. Usually, <laughs> any any chance right. to have a dig at Lorne, you usually, uh, <laughs> you usually chip in. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take a dig at Lauren. I think he's stupid, and that's why we like to listen, because he is hilariously stupid. And everything (laughs) he says is stupid. And all his one-liners make those calls that are several hours long, where Winnie is just being insane, and it's kind of like a one-woman show. Lauren will throw some random one-liner in there, like, where's your Eric lover? (laughs) Or... (laughs) Or, um, what's up, Mrs. Dan? Yeah, oh my god, I know. It's so, it's so childish, isn't it? Sorry I can't blow you right now, Eric. (laughs) Yum, yum, yum. Oh my god. Yeah, those those things end up being funny. Yeah, they're they're really just insane, these calls. Especially with Winnie. They certainly are. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, they must have had... It, 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 we've touched upon this before. He's kind of le- reached the level of fame that he could have only have dreamed of, but it's for the worst way imaginable. Um, it's it's so ironic. Like, you know, the h- hundreds and hundreds of hours, millions of... It, like, this channel... And I don't just... Not just talked about Lawn, but I think the majority of the views that I have had on this channel... Like through lawn streams, there's like been 1.3 million, um, which is just fucking mental. But it's pretty much about lawn, most of it. You know, it's like this is just one channel. And just think about the catfishing like hundreds of hours, of millions of people. Well, not millions of people, but you know, millions of views. It's insane. So his kind of legacy is going to live on. The internet never forgets. Apart from him. Oh, and by the way, um so i'm sure that everybody knows at this point that the google street view of lauren's address was updated (laughs) and it was i think it said like a month ago which is funny to me i was thinking about this this morning um was that the last one that was done was i don't know was it 2012 or something like that so this street view of Lauren with Lauren outside with Roscoe what? is going to be on Google for at least a decade. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, I'm going that's on funny. there right now. Hopefully yeah, I can get that access to that live feed as well and see where he's up to now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go look at the address and you're going to see Lauren standing outside and Roscoe's out there too. With a cigarette in his hand, no doubt. I, I mean, I'm sure, but... You know, you can't really see too, too well. But yeah, he's the second um, the second predator who was found on their street view because the other one was... Jay Refner. What's his name? Jay Refner is outside his house, too. Yeah, it's not funny. Who's Jay Refner? Meet Rocket 8. Um, oh, wow. Well, it wasn't he pictured. Did anybody... Someone saw him in, like, the, the store, one of the local fucking Walmart. I won't be there. They posted a picture of him on some fucking Facebook group. Do you mean Westerbeck? No. Westerbeck uh, was that? Oh, Jay Ruffner too? Yeah, okay. yeah. Like, he was just there like... <laughs> I swear he has like a strange voice, that guy. But it was just he, so funny. Yeah, he does. He does. But I'm with the, the Ruffner one, they, I believe that they blurred out his face because that's what they typically will do. Um, for the Google, the Google Street Views, anybody out there, well, they'll blur their face. But I don't think Lauren's face is blurred. So, really so, so would he have seen the Google camera? Would he have seen? He the was Google looking at it. Eye? Yes. Oh my! <laughs> I'm going on there now. <laughs> Did he think it was Google Earth? <laughs> oh, I don't know, but you know, with with Lauren's paranoia, he's not going to know what that is. There's a car driving by with a camera apparatus. <laughs> Did he have his earpiece in at the time? I don't know, because you, you would have to zoom in, but then it would get really grainy. Can you imagine it? Oh, sure be did, We're never going to know the That's answer to mid, this. Mid scream. But can you imagine if he was getting catfished at that exact moment? I wonder if he moment? called the sheriff. He's yes, got to be paranoid at this point. 
Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. He's that definitely would set him off because even just people who would turn around in his driveway or stop on mm-hmm. the side of the road, like granted that that is a strange thing. If somebody stopped in front of my house, I'd be like a little curious. I wouldn't be paranoid because I know they're going to move on, but you know, if they were oh, you out you there along. late at night, no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, he's I mean, on, even I he's on a drove road. past his house and stopped and I mean, he was in prison at the time. So we <laughs> couldn't have seen him. <laughs> right. If it was me, if it was me, I'd hide in the woods. <laughs> if it was you and Lauren, you'd hide in the woods. Cause he did that. I'd hide, I'd hide with Lauren. Yeah, we we build a <laughs> we build a little meat market back there, so we can. Yeah, that's re- very strange, but yeah. So go take a look at it if you haven't. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. Oh yeah. yeah, I think every single person listening to this now is gonna co- have a look at it, guys, and come back in the comments and tell me what you thought <laughs> when you've seen oh, it. That'll be funny. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah, right. Okay, I'll have to wrap it up. Um, it's getting a bit late here so thanks for everybody who's dropped by I hope you found it quite interesting I kind of touched upon a lot of stuff that we have already but with the amount of streams that we've done it's kind of impossible not to I just thought it might be a bit interesting to take a slightly different angle on it so let please let me know what you think uh, in the comments um, and yeah we'll catch up with you soon thanks to Amanda James Tiffany and Shinsquala as always my best lawn friends um you know what you know what I mean. Best lawn mm-hmm. enthusiast friends, not like right back at me. You, buddy. Not like me, you, Tiffany, and Amanda James are all and lawn are all mates. You know what I mean? That'd be a bit weird. Um, yeah, I don't want Lorna. No, no, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, yeah, so guys. <laughs>